Here's what people regret at the end of their life. Knowing what people regret at the end of their life will help us live better. Doing these exercises on a daily basis can help us keep our priorities straight. The number one regret that I hear as a hospice nurse is not appreciating their healthy body while they had it. So many patients to me said in one way or the other, I wish I would have understood how amazing it is to have a healthy body. Just to be able to feel hungry, taste food, shower on my own, go to the bathroom on my own, walk, talk, have energy, all of these things that we take for granted on a daily basis, they would tell me, I wish I did not take this for granted on a daily basis. This is the number one thing that helps me in my everyday life, thinking that, reminding myself on a daily basis how grateful I am that I have a working body, that I can feel hungry, that I like the taste of food, that I can walk down to get my mail. Little things like that really helps me redefine in my brain what matters most. The second regret I hear the most is that they worked their life away. So I wish I didn't only focus on work and just focused on like working, working, working until I retired because then they get to retirement age or even didn't make it to retirement age. They get diagnosed with something terminal and then they can't reap what they tried to sow. They always say, I wish I would have taken more time off. I wish I didn't care about work so much. I, I wish I realized I should be living here today now, taking the vacations here today now and not just thinking about, oh, I'll do that later. I'll do that later in life when I'm retired. I've heard that so many times. The final thing I hear a lot is about relationships. Wishing that they would have made up with someone sooner, started talking to someone sooner, saw their family more, saw their kids more, you know, enjoyed the time with their friends and family more. They used to always say, you know, they, I thought I had more time. I thought I would do that later. I didn't realize how important that was. And then once they got sick, once they realized the end was near, it all of a sudden put everything into focus that like this is the most important thing. These people and my time with them are the most important thing. I wish I would have learned that before I got sick. Actually, I lied one more. The last thing people said was they wish they didn't live life for other people. They really, meaning like they really cared about what other people thought, the image of how they looked, what would people think if I did X, Y, and Z, or what their parents wanted, even when their parents were gone. They still lived this life to make their parents proud versus doing what they wanted to do, being who they wanted to be, not caring so much about what other people thought. So these things I bring to you, I truly mean it when I say, I try to implement these things in my daily life. That is what my hospice patients have taught me. I have exercises that I'm going to talk to you about that I do on a daily basis to help me live better. And in turn, I hope I will die better because I've lived better. I'm taking what my patients have taught me about being here, being now, appreciating the little things, putting things into perspective on a daily basis so I can live more fully. So here are some things you can do so you can implement some of these things in your daily life. Now, I realize that we live in a world where like we have to work. So this whole idea of like, I wish I didn't work my life away doesn't really apply. Sometimes we, you know, we have a, a mortgage and bills to pay and groceries to buy and children to take care of. So you have to work. But what I do is I try to use that knowledge, that wisdom of not to work your life away to help me take a moment in the morning. So what I do is I take a moment in the morning and I basically contemplate the fact that I could be gone in six months. I actually think that if I knew I was going to be gone or dead in six months, how would that change this day? Like, what would I do differently? And now we have to keep in perspective. Like I said, we couldn't just quit our jobs and go traveling, right? We still have things we have to do. But what it does for me is helps me keep things into perspective, basically reminding me of my own mortality helps me appreciate that sip of coffee that I have that I love so much or like the feeling of the sun on my face as I'm contemplating this or appreciating my dog that's laying next to me, appreciating that I can 
get up after I'm done with my morning meditation and go walk outside and be of service to my patients. These little things like contemplating the fact that I'm not always gonna be here, that this life isn't always promised to me, helps me really stay present in the moment and appreciate the little things in life. Appreciate that I can call my mom, that I can say good morning to her and talk to her for a bit. It's really easy to get ahead of yourself and, and forget that those things are what really matter to you. So I always take time in the morning to contemplate the fact that I am mortal. And in knowing that, how do I want to live this day, this day that I'm in right now? How can I make the most of it? Another thing to contemplate or an exercise you can use to sort of filter out and know what, what your regrets might be, right? Some people might be sitting here going, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I've never done this before, right? Again, this is all meant to help you not make you feel burdened or scared. Okay, so this is, these are exercises meant to help you. So keep that in mind when you're doing them, okay? Think about if you knew you were dying, right? What would be regrets that you'd have right now? Like if I got diagnosed with something terminal tomorrow, which could very well happen, remember, what things would I regret, if anything? And whatever pops up for you, whatever comes up for you, think about why you would regret that. And if there's things you can put into place now, today, starting to get the ball rolling, where, where you can change that regret, right? Maybe the regret is, I didn't see my parents more. That would be something that I think I would feel regret about. Actually, hold on. I have an exercise you can go, you can do with me. I'm gonna go get paper. We're gonna do this together. I'm gonna write a couple of my regrets down. You can do the same. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. You know, there's two ways you can look at it. I think they're both equally good. It can be, if I knew I was dying in six months, what would my regrets be? Or you could even keep it simpler, like in today, like today, you could do it at night before you go to bed. What are my regrets for today, right? And you can think about things that you may have regretted. People are their own worst critics. So it's not about beating you up even more. It's just about learning your behavior and what you do and do not want to do and how you want to spend your day and not spend your day. So for example, my regret I think would be not seeing my parents enough. So not seeing my parents enough. Now that I know that, and I'm still here living, as far as I know, I'm still here now. So what can I do to see my parents more, right? Does it mean that I call them more if I can't actually go see them? Does it mean that I fly them out here to see me if I can't go home to see them? You know, there's so many other things, but now that I know, I see it in plain sight, what my regrets would be, I can do something about them because I'm not dead yet. I'm still here. By naming it, by recognizing it, I'm able to take some action. And again, this is a step-by-step -step thing. This does not have to, this is not meant to overwhelm you. This can be a step-by-step -step process, even little things, right? Like not every, yeah, I regret I didn't see my parents more. Well, sometimes that's not an option, right? Sometimes that's truly not an option. So what else can I do, like I said? I can call my parents every day. I can make sure I have a weekly call with them, something like that. And, or we could do something drastic, right? There, there could be a whole thing in my life where I suddenly realize, you know what? I wanna move back home, right? I want to do that. Things like this, having, having exercises like this can really help us reframe our life and really see what we're prioritizing and maybe the things we're prioritizing don't actually matter. And writing it down, doing these exercises on a daily basis can help us keep our priorities straight so we can live better, right? We live more fully. We live more fully ourselves. We are, we're more fully alive, which again helps us in the dying process whenever that may be.